Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between, there will be no Starship launch this month. The acting head of the Federal Aviation Administration officially announced on Wednesday that the agency could advance a launch license as early as next month for SpaceX's Starship rocket after a previous one exploded following a test launch back in April. We're working well with them and have been in good discussions. Teams are working together and I think we're optimistic sometime next month. Acting FAA Administrator Polly Trottenberg told reporters on the sidelines of a conference. This means SpaceX's Starship can't launch until at least October. The company must obtain a modified FAA license to launch, which entails a sometimes lengthy review of Starship's flight trajectory, accident probabilities, and other factors affecting nearby public safety. But aside from that, SpaceX would still need a separate environmental approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service before a launch. Trottenberg did not say how long that might take. They're concerned with the concrete that splattered in the surrounding wildlife refuge around Boca Chica from the OFT-1. After Ship 24 and Booster 7's flight, the Fish and Wildlife Service explained in an email to the media that the footprint of the blast was vast. Much of the damage was done at the moment of launch when the force of the rocket's first stage engines destroyed the launch pad. Impacts from the launch include numerous large concrete chunks, stainless steel sheets, metal, and other objects objects hurled thousands of feet away, along with a plume cloud of pulverized concrete that deposited material up to six and a half miles northwest of the pad site. The Fish and Wildlife Service wrote, Approximately 385 acres of debris was found on both SpaceX's facility and in the surrounding Boca Chica State Park, along with a three and a half acre fire burned on park land south of the launch site. SpaceX after that has made a thousand changes for Starship, completing and documenting the 57 items required by the FAA for Flight 2 of Starship. The launch pad received notable upgrades like steel reinforcements and a new water deluge system to withstand the force from Starship's 33 Raptor engines. These enhancements, coupled with other corrective measures, will presumably undergo further scrutiny by the FAA. Notably, Elon was going to meet with the FAA after the AI business in DC yesterday. We hope that Musk will bring Starship closer to its flight date. SpaceX's job for Starship's next next orbital flight is probably to wait. As we were waiting, we had this amazing picture, made on Earth by humans, said SpaceX. This is all of the Starship team in front of the Ship 25 and Booster 9 full stack. And honestly, comparing this to the same picture of Booster 4 and Ship 20, that's nearly double the number of employees. Great work by the Starship team, Elon Musk said. Much higher chance of success than Flight 1, he added. So far, SpaceX has not conducted any tests on Ship 25 and Booster 9 since their assembly. Nevertheless, the anticipated flight preparations are likely to involve a cryogenic test on the ship to assess the ship's quick disconnect functionality after it has been removed for modifications. As of now, there is no clear indication that SpaceX intends to conduct a wet dress rehearsal before the second flight. However, it's important to note that plans at the Starbase facility are subject to change as SpaceX approaches the launch date and flexibility remains remains a key element of their strategy. Meanwhile, Booster 10 is currently undergoing a cryogenic proof test at Massey's. This prototype has already been tested back in July. This could mean that Ship 26 and Booster 10 are the next stack to fly for Flight 3. Moving on, the rest of SpaceX is also making noteworthy moves. The company is launching Axiom's AX-3 mission with the first all-European commercial astronaut crew. The mission is set to launch from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida with a targeted launch date no earlier than January of 2024. SpaceX will play a crucial role in this mission, launching the AX-3 crew atop a Falcon 9 rocket aboard the Crew Dragon spacecraft as announced on September 12th. These private astronaut missions are part of NASA's strategy to foster the growth of a low Earth orbit commercial ecosystem. This approach aims to open up opportunities for more nations and individuals to participate in space activities. Angela Hart, manager of NASA's NASA's Commercial Low Earth Orbit Development Program expressed her pride in these efforts. I am proud to see NASA and industry's continued dedication toward enabling private astronaut missions, said Hart. These commercial efforts continue to expand opportunity and access to microgravity research and discovery. Each of these missions is a next step in building our shared future in low Earth orbit. During the AX-3 crew's stay at the orbiting laboratory, which is planned for up to 14 days, the private astronauts 
Alliance will engage in a mission involving scientific research, outreach activities, and commercial endeavors. Notably, this mission will feature the first Turkish astronaut in space and marks the first commercial mission for an astronaut sponsored by the European Space Agency. It is an honor to command another private astronaut mission with Axiom Space and lead a dynamic crew of professional operators representing several nations across one region of the world, said Lopez Alegria. This crew is shifting the paradigm of how governments and space agencies access and reap the benefits of microgravity. The AX-3 mission will be transformational as it fosters partnerships outside the construct of the ISS and positions European nations as pioneers of the emerging commercial space industry. I look forward to working with this team and with all those who will support our mission on the ground, on orbit, and around the world. NASA and Axiom Space have already signed an order for a fourth private astronaut mission scheduled for launch no earlier than August 2024. The success of these private missions, including Axiom Mission 1 and Axiom 2, demonstrates the growing importance of commercial ventures in space exploration. In conclusion, Axiom Mission 3 marks a significant milestone in the journey toward commercial space travel, international cooperation in space missions, and the development of a thriving low-Earth orbit ecosystem. It's a testament to the evolving landscape of space exploration and the increasing involvement of private entities in this exciting frontier. And for our last bit of news for today, technicians at NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans have installed the first of four RS-25 engines on the core stage of the agency's SLS rocket that'll help power NASA's first crewed Artemis mission to the moon. The engine installation, which took place on September 11th, marked a significant milestone following the earlier assembly of all five primary structures constituting the SLS core stage earlier this spring. The integration efforts are being led by NASA in collaboration with Aerojet Rocketdyne, a contractor responsible for the RS-25 engines, and L3 Harris Technologies Company, as well as Boeing, the primary contractor overseeing the core stage. The remaining RS-25 engines will be incorporated into the core stage and propulsion and electrical systems will be integrated into the structure. All four RS-25 engines are positioned at the base of the core stage within the engine section, offering protection from extreme temperatures during launch. The section also features an aerodynamic boat tail fairing to streamline airflow. During launch and flight, these four engines will continuously fire for over eight minutes, consuming propellant from the core stage's massive tanks at a rate of 5,678 liters per second. Each one of the SLS engines bears a unique serial number. The engine installed on September 11th, designated as E-2059, occupies position two on the core stage. Notably, this engine, along with the one in position one, E-2047, has a history of previous space shuttle flights. E-2047, in particular, boasts an impressive track record, having participated in 15 shuttle missions, including STS-98, the same one that delivered the Destiny Laboratory module to the International Space Station back in 2001. The engines set to be installed in positions 3 and 4, E-2062 and E-2063, are new engines that incorporate some previously flown hardware. And that's it for today, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.